Okay, here we go. Section 12.2, and uh, as you can see, I, I got a little carried away and I put an exclamation point after vectors because I think vectors are uh, interesting, they're important, and uh, once you get a kind of wrap your head around them, they're pretty intuitive too. Uh, and also in the background, a nice view of the cosmos, um, because on Wednesday the physics club is going to get together and talk about uh, Carl Sagan and cosmos and whatnot. Uh, so, without further ado, here we go. Also, um, my son Walter is uh, kind of grumpy right now, so you might hear him squawking in the background. Uh, just ignore it if you can. Um, all right, first page. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about the difference between um, a vector versus a scalar. All right, now I haven't defined either of these things. Um, but, uh, we'll, ju we'll just jump right into it and we'll kind of make a list of, see my squiggly lines don't work well in, in here. So, um, some things that are, uh, scalar, I'll, I'll do scalar first. Here's a list of scalar things. Here's a list of vector quantities. And for scalar, uh, here's some things like mass, right? Kilograms, grams, uh, Temperature uh, is a scalar, and how about energy is a scalar, volume, you know, for instance, like liters is volume, or volume, like uh, in sound, right, maybe uh, atmospheric pressure. These are all scalar quantities, all right? And let's compare those to some vector quantities, such as velocity, all right? What's it, well, how is velocity different than all these? How about force? All right, force and mass are related, but how? Um, moment or torque. I, know in, I think in your physics class, you guys call this torque. And uh, momentum, does momentum uh, and how about field strength, maybe, is a vector quantity. And last, how about displacement, or, uh, yeah, I'll call it displacement. Or movement. Alright, so what makes these scalars and what makes these vectors? <clears throat> well, the reason these are all vectors is because these have a magnitude. And these have also magnitude, and these have direction. And with the fact that they have direction is what sets them apart from the scalars. That it depends on which way. If uh, you know, I said you know, push on that, you know, push on that chair. You know, you're trying to move a couch around. Push on the chair. You got to tell someone which way you want them to push it. Um, field strength, gravity, gravitational field. Well, which way does it pull us? It pulls us down. If it didn't pull us down, we'd have some problems. Uh, displacement, you know, how far do you have to go? Well, if uh, someone asks, where, where is the party in the field, in the cornfield, and you said, well, it's about a six-minute walk, you know, that, which, which way? You need a direction to go with all these things. Um, so the vector includes, and this is so important, whoops, um, I'm going to put a red box around this. Okay, magnitude and a direction. Um, so the uh, the question then is, uh, you may not be asking this yet, but uh, how do we represent vectors? How do we represent vectors? All right, now I'll answer this with a little picture, and that will be um, like this. So, uh, the vector represented by the directed line segment AB has an initial point A, a terminal point B, and its length is denoted by the absolute value of AB. Two vectors are equal if they have the same length and dimension. Direction, well, what the heck does that mean? Um, let's draw a few quick examples, and 
I'll do, well, I'll just do kind of a qualitative example of these things here. So I could draw kind of a coordinate system here, kind of a generic coordinate system like this, and, um, uh, you know what, nope, I'm going to put, I'm going to make these on a graph. Okay, so which means I have to insert a graph. Make that a little bigger. Like that, okay. Um, so what do we mean by a directed line segment? Um, I could draw a, uh, a vector in here, and let's make um, this point, uh, where did I do that? Um, a is three, four, okay, so let's go here. There, I'll call that point A, and then we go this way, and then up to here, and okay, I'll call this vector A, and I'll talk a little bit about this notation in a sec. Um, likewise, I could draw another one that goes uh, from here and goes over. Uh, how do I draw this one? Horn down three. Um, yeah, I could draw a vector that goes like that, and that's um, I'm going to label that one vector B. And then I could draw another one that goes up here, and I could just start it up here and go over. Um, this way, and then down to here. I don't mean to be doing that. That's a new feature that I've just discovered about the tablet. And I'll call this one C. And it's not supposed to be wobbly like that. It should have a straight line. And then let's draw one more that goes um, from here. Uh, and that'll go to here. We'll call that one D. Okay. Um, now, when I draw these things, um, you know, it, it says the vectors are equal if they have the same length and direction. Okay, so now if you notice, I, I drew these carefully so that this vector A, it kind of goes over 3 and up 4. So if it goes over 3 and up 4, what's its length? Well, the length of this one is 5, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, this one here, vector B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, this one also has a length of 5, but it's pointed in a different direction. So this vector, or the vector represented by this directed line segment, is different than the vector represented by this line segment. Um, what about number C here? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. A and C are in the same, kind of, they're parallel to each other, they're the same length, but C is going the opposite direction as A. So A and C are not the same. In fact, they're opposites. Now let's look at B and D. B and D have the same length. They're both five units long. Five units long. They're going in the same direction. So these vectors are identical. All right. So the key thing here is that they don't have to, they're equal. They're equal if they have the same length and direction. It doesn't matter where they are. If they have the same length and the same direction, these two vectors are equal. Um, now the way we write these, and uh, this will be a little bit awkward because I ran out of room. Well, no, maybe I'll squeeze it in here. I'll try to squeeze it in here. So we write vector A. Um, we could say this equals... Um, and this little now in your textbook the vector quantities are all in boldface print and that's pretty typical But since I don't have the capability of writing in boldface print I put this little symbol over it that kind of a half arrow that you know that that's very typical vector notation and then To describe this we give it its x-coordinate and its y-coordinate or how far it travels or how far it displaces in the x-direction how far it displaces in the y-direction so this vector would be three, four, and we put it in these kind of angle brackets like this. Vector B, on the other hand, 
uh, goes over four and down three. So this one is um, four and negative three. Also in angle brackets like that. D is exactly the same. B and D are the same. They're both four negative three. So I'm going to write equals just to save space. Equals D. And then finally this last one that we have C. Vector C equals, um, well we go back three and down four. So that becomes negative three negative 4. So you can see that A up here and C down here are in fact opposite vectors. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but in, in general um, a vector V like this, uh, we write, so we write it in vector notation there, but then we'll just say V1 V2 kind of indicating that the two different dimensions in which you know this vector travels. And these are all 2D vectors. So I'm going to make a note of that over here so we don't forget that these are 2D vectors. I'm living only in the X and Y plane right now. In fact, I'll label these X and Y because it becomes really hard to draw these 3D vectors. Um, so if we're to try to do these in 3D, let me uh, insert another little definition here. Let's look at 3D, 2D and 3D vectors. Okay, so drag that up as high as we can go. All right, so if V is a two-dimensional vector in the plane equal to the vector with initial point at the origin and terminal point V1 and V2, then the component form of V is V equals V1 comma V2. All right, so what does that mean? Um, if we put this, uh, the vector with its initial point at the origin. So if I had some vector L, I'll draw a picture of that, what the heck. Um, we're going to split this into two days. Um, so I think we have time to take a few liberties here. So if I have some vector that goes like this, um, let's say it starts here and goes, say, maybe up to and over uh, 5. Like that. And I call this, um, I don't know, vector uh, I don't know, S. Right? S is often used for displacement. Well, this vector is the very same vector as going up to and over 5 here. So if I go up to and over 5, this is also vector s. These are the same vector. Same magnitude, same direction, same vector. So an f is a two-dimensional vector in the plane equal to the vector with initial point at the origin, internal point v1, v2. So this point here, uh, v1, well, no, I'm going to write this as... Uh, to be consistent with the book's notation, I'm going to write this point as S1, comma, S2. That's the point. Yeah, nope, I'm going to change that again. Just uh, I told you guys I'm going to struggle with this. Uh, it's like spelling cat. Um, this is the point, what is it? It's the point 5, comma, 2. But it's in vector form, we're going to call it S1 and S2. Okay, so it's 5, 2. These are the same vector. The component form is V1, V2, over 5, up 2. If V is a three dimensional vector equal to the vector with its initial point at the origin, blah, 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 and it ends at these various points, V1, V2, V3, then the component, component form of V is V, and it's got the angle brackets v1, v2, v3. So if we need to add a third dimension to get in three dimensions, so spatial dimensions, um, we just add the extra component here. Okay, that's all that means. Um, so if we're to try to draw a picture of this, um, let's draw um, some other, th let's try to draw a 3D vector. And I guarantee you this is not going to go well, 
but that's kind of the point. So I can draw a y axis this way. So if I draw a y, right, we talked about right hand coordinate system. Um, my x and my y coordinates are already, already determined. So I call this y and I call this x, and then I can draw a, um, a z coordinate. Kind of goes like this. So that'll be z. And let's say I want to draw some vector f. Right, f is very often used, one of the most common vectors we come across because that's a force. And I'm going to say that f equals 7, 2, and to make this easy to draw, I'm going to make this a negative 1. And you'll see why in a sec. So if I sketch a picture of this, um, I could go over seven, so let's go roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'm going to go up two in the y direction, so one, two, and so I kind of draw a dotted line like that, uh, dotted line down to there, and I'm going to go to negative one uh, in this direction. Uh, nope, I'm going to make this just to go a little farther. Uh, let's make this a negative. Ah. Where's my eraser? There it is. Negative three. And so I'm going to go three units in this direction. Remember, drawing these is all about um, kind of keeping lines parallel. So my, my z-axis here is parallel to my z-axis. And then when I actually go to draw this vector, I draw a straight line as best I can right to that point. And so that vector is... 7, 2, negative 3. The three components of this, I'll draw these, you know, I'll try to draw my components in dotted form here. Um, that's 7. And then I'll draw a dotted one that goes up here. That's 2. And then this dotted one that goes back here is uh, when I say that, negative 3. Alright, so that's 7, 2, negative 3. So this is an attempt to draw a, um, I mean, I'm going to write this down because I think that's it's important. This is a black, okay. This is a 2D sketch of a 3D line segment representing a uh, three D vector. Wow. Okay, so it's a two D sketch of a three D line segment that represents a three D vector. So even if you're a really good artist, don't try to use sketches or even on graph paper or even computer programs um, to do this. You're going to have to be able to work both picture it as a sketch um, but do the work as a uh, um, you know as mathematics. Alright so um, this brings up an interesting as long as we're looking at this picture uh, what about the magnitude? Right we talked about it has to have magnitude and direction. What is the magnitude of F? Okay, and we define that as uh, magnitude is defined as uh, we kind of it looks like the absolute value of f. Why does it look like absolute value? Because remember, absolute value of a number is its distance from zero, regardless of direction. Absolute value is the distance from zero. Well, this is the magnitude or kind of the distance to the terminal point regardless of direction. So the way we do this is just like you might guess it is f1 squared plus f2 squared plus f3 squared. Wow a lot of subscripts going on there so that looks like some real math. Um, this is just the distance formula right it's just the distance formula so what do we get? The root of uh, 49 plus 4 
plus 9, and if I do this right, that's the root of 62. We can probably figure out some number that goes into there, but I'm not going to do it right now. So the, the magnitude of this thing, the magnitude, the absolute value of this vector is uh, root 62. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what did I do here? Let's take a look up here. I kind of took a vector that goes 7 units in the x direction, 2 units in the y direction, and 3 units in the z direction, negative 3 units in the z direction, and I went from the from the original, from the origin, the original point, all the way to this end point here, and I said that those are the same. <clears throat> so this kind of implies something called vector addition. Alright, so let's draw a um, another picture of that and see if we can figure out a little something about vector addition. All right, and uh, I'll put in a couple example ones here. Let's put in some graph paper. Actually, if I were smart, I just I wonder if that'll work. Oh yeah, it writes on top of there. Good. Um, so if I've got two vectors, let's say I've got f1 and f2. Um, f1 I'm going to draw as uh, let's say four three. So over four up three. So that's my first one. Boy, I missed badly there. So this is um, F1. And that's a vector. And then I draw another one that is, say, 6, 0. So that's going to look like this. From 4 all the way out to here. That's F1. Two, um, and so this equals. Uh, I'll write it up here. F one equals four three, and F two equals six zero. Then I can say that um, F R, which the physics students will recognize as kind of a resultant force equals f1 plus f2, which equals, and I can just add up the components. So I add this plus this, so that's 10, comma, this plus this, which is um, 3. So all I do is add up the individual components um, to get the sum of those two. And... Uh, so I'm going to write out, <clears throat> in general, if I said that in 3D, uh, I could say that a vector u equals u1, comma, u2, comma, u3, angle brackets, and my angle v equals v1, v2, v3 angle bracket, then u1 plus u2, or u plus v equals, I just add up the individual components, u1 plus v1, comma, u2 plus v2, Irish rock band, German rocket, and u3 plus v3, angle bracket. So that's uh, vector addition uh, in three dimensions. It's very similar to um, two dimensions. All right, so here's a couple of pictures that the books give that I think are pretty helpful. Uh, vector add triangle, okay. Oh, you know, we didn't talk about magnitude yet. Um, I'm gonna stick that back in here and you'll just have to figure it out. I'll make room here. Magnitude. Put that right down there. Well, that's, uh, maybe I can make that a little smaller. All right, well, hopefully you guys can read that. Um, sorry about that. And we'll go into 
Uh, back over here, we'll do some vector addition. Um, vector add triangle is the first one I want to put in there. So when we think about this this way, uh, the vector addition, so this is triangle addition. or tip to tail. Um, so when we add one vector, say, you know, say we're um, trying to you know, find a party in the woods out here again, so here's the party. And then maybe, you know, uh, there's some sort of a, it's a theme party and you get the password here. So, um, you know, you could say, I'm going to go so many units this way and so many units this way, and um, end up here where there's a secret person or a little, you know, I don't know, a flag on a tree that gives you a password. And then you walk another vector, which involves a horizontal distance and a vertical distance, until you finally get to the party, right? Well, that puts you in the same spot as, or it's equal to the original vector that just goes like this. So if you arrange the two partial, and that doesn't make any sense, I know. But if you take the two partial vectors, or the two individual vectors, u and v, and you place them tip to tail. So here is tip, and here is tail. Tip to tail like that, you can kind of add them geometrically like that. There's another way to do it, and that's using the parallelogram method. So if I put this down here, and call this the parallelogram method. So what we do is we, we have our two vectors and they're both in kind of initial position or a standard position with their, their tail at the origin, which helps us kind of identify the two vectors. But if we want to add these two together, um, essentially all we're doing is we're taking this one, and let me uh, change colors here, change thicknesses. I'm going to take this V, I'm just going to take this V and put it right there, and then I draw that in like that. And so really, I one way to think about it is to take the two vectors and imagine that those are two adjacent sides of a parallelogram. And then the diagonal of the parallelogram, I'm going to write that out. So this becomes the diagonal of the parallelogram. Okay, so the diagonal of the parallelogram uh, is the resultant vector, the, the sum of the two vectors. But it's important to understand that these are the same thing. Now, for displacements, or perhaps velocities, it makes sense to think about it this way, this tip-to-tail thing. I'm going to go this far and this far, uh, and then I'm going to uh, change courses and go this far and this far, and I wind up going this far. My net distance is this. However, if we're thinking like maybe sled dogs pulling a sled, uh, or forces you know, pushing on a rock or something like that, you know, if I've got one one you know dog pulling this way, and another dog pulling this way, their combined effort, the net effort of these two things, is this. All right, so that's kind of how I think about these things. How you think about it, totally up to you. All right, let's move on to another example, um, and this one will involve some more graph paper. And let's say I've got one vector that is, um, we'll call it R. So a lot of times we use R as a vector. And uh, so I'm going to say that R equals, I'm going to make a little thicker line here, uh, that R is uh, 3 and 2. How about, that'll, look, that'll work out all right. So that's um, R. And I'm going to say that R equals... Three, two. Okay. Well, what if I did R, if I want to do three R? 
So I did three of those. Well, what I do, I do another three, two, one, two, three, one, two. Like this is kind of like, uh, you know, slope intercept line back in ninth grade. So that's another R. Oh, you know what? Just because there's a three there, I'm going to. That one doesn't look good. That one doesn't look good. Uh, we're we're going to do four R just to make this a little more clear. So this is R. And then uh, another 3, 2 would put me there. So that's another R. And the last one would go 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, about out here. So you go that way. So that's one more R. So 4R really is um, 4 times 3 and 4 times 2. Because at the end of the day, what happened, I wound up moving over 12. I did the horizontal component four times. And wound up moving up eight, because I did the vertical component four times. Um, in general, or if we want to do this in 3D, which would be very, very difficult to draw, uh, I could say that some constant times some vector equals k times that one component k times that component, and k times this component, right? And that's it. So to sum all that up, I'm not sure where is this going to fit here. Um, da, 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 vector add, um, where is that? I thought I had scale and something or other. Uh, F add and scale up. Oh, I didn't save that as a JPEG. Well, I'll add that in later. So I'll stick that in there. Actually, I'm going to pause for a second so I can put that in. Okay, so now I just, um, I've got to keep all these as JPEGs, and I didn't convert this one to a JPEG first. So add and scale looks like this. We'll drag this down here. Um, so the generic book definition says this, um, if u is u1, u2, u3, and v is v1, v2, v3, uh, they're vectors with k, then u plus v is u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2, u3 plus v3, and then ku is just the k times each one of the individual components. All right, so that's all there is there. Uh, and then the last topic we're going to talk about um, for 12.2a, which is what I'm calling this now, just made that up, um, is vector subtraction, because this is a little counterintuitive, if you ask me. Vector subtraction. Um, so, the, the first we, um, uh, let's see, yeah, I'm going to draw it, I'm going to draw it this way. Um, we'll see how this goes. This is my first time doing this, right? So I'm allowed a little, little uh, uncertainty. So you can agree or disagree, but I'm going to take the liberty here. So there's one. I'm going to draw uh, another one in there. So 10 by 10 graph. Okay, put this guy over here as far as it goes and scale it up. Like that. See if that works. Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to draw in um, one vector P, which I'm going to say is 4, 5. So 4 to 5 like this, and I'm going to call that guy vector P. And then I'm going to draw another vector in that's 3, 1. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, so it goes to there. And I'm going to call that one uh, Q. So vector Q is going to be 3, 1. And then vector P is going to be 4, 5. So if I want to do the, the difference of those two, I could write this. I could write that P minus Q really equals P plus negative 1 times Q. Now why do I do that? Uh, because then if I put in... Um, my P, which is 4, 5. Actually, I wonder if I can... Yeah, I can scale this up. Sweet. I'm going to move that over. Yeah, no, that didn't do any good. 
I made it too small. So I'm going to draw this here. So I'm going to draw my P, which is 4, 5. So it goes up to there. And then, um, so this is P. And I'm going to take a negative Q. So I go over 3 and down 1. So I start at the tip of P. And I go negative Q. So I add these using tip to tail. And then what am I left with? My resultant, which I'll do in green, goes here. And the green one then is um, the resultant, and I'm going to call it maybe the difference, equals P minus Q, like that. All right, and so if we do that algebraically, it is... Um, let me write this, uh, D equals P minus Q equals, um, we we'll do it component wise, so it becomes uh, 4 minus 3, comma, 5 minus 1, which equals 1, comma, 4. And did that work out? Sure it did. 1, 4, and that's where I wound up. When I took the negative of Q, I added it to P, and I wound up with 1, 4. Um, and so one another way to think about that, and I'm going to try to squeeze this drawing in here, is um, vector subtraction intuitive. Okay. So I'll put that there. So if I have u and v, I can really add a negative v to this, and then so u plus negative v winds up being down here. All right. Um, but we'll take, yeah, that kind of is a crappy place to put that. I'll put that down. Like that. All right. So this is what I call the intuitive way to subtract vectors. Um, but there's another way to subtract vectors, uh, and I'll call it the alternative method, but really is much quicker. And then let's uh, start with the algebra. Okay, so we'll... And say, I'm going to say that D equals, the difference equals the vector P minus the vector q. And that could be rearranged to say that um, d plus q vectors equals p. And then I'm going to rewrite this one more time as q plus d equals p. So why the heck would I do that? Well, I'm going to just throw in the other drawing and kind of explain it to you guys. The vector subtraction non-intuitive. So if I've got u and v, but I'm going to leave them both in standard position, I'm not going to make either one of them negative. I'm not going to make either one of them negative. The difference between u and v is if you walked in the v vector, right? You, so you got some bad directions and you walked this way. The difference between u and v is what you'd have to do once you've done v to get all the way back to where u ended up. So the this is more of a qualitative way to think about the difference between, let's write that out. It's the difference between u and v. All right. uh, so if you've got two vectors in you know, uh, standard position, you know, uh, tails at the origin, and you don't want to bother with rewriting and transcribing and stuff like that, u minus v starts with the second one, the negative one, and goes to the first one. So what if you did v, how would you, what did you have to do to make up to get up to u? In other words, q plus what? 
would give you p. Okay, so that's vector um, subtraction. Now, as long as we're manipulating things, uh, or speaking of algebra with vectors, right, and what's going to come? Our last picture, right? You maybe saw this. Oh, no, I didn't save that one either. Okay, hold on. Pause, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. And um, so I'm going to insert basic vector operations. And then this is going to be a little small for you guys, I know. Um, but that's the biggest I can make it. But this is in your book. Let's talk about these quickly. U plus V equals V plus U. Does that work? Sure. If we go a certain distance and then uh, another certain distance, well, it doesn't matter which way we walk first, we wind up in the same place. Um, so U and V commute, right, in addition, vector addition. U plus zero equals zero, right? That's an important one, subtle but important, that by adding nothing, adding the vector, remember this has got to be a vector zero, U plus zero equals zero. Vector zero means it's, it's zero direction, zero magnitude in some direction. Doesn't change our original. Here's the scalar u times u. The scalar or scalar zero times the vector u equals the vector zero. Right now, this seems silly, I know, but later on uh, it will make a difference. Here we have the scalar a times the scalar b times the vector u. Scalar a, scalar b, vector u. What happens there? Well, since we're just multiplying these, it doesn't matter which order we multiply the components in. Um, that equals AB times U. All right. uh, likewise, we can distribute, you know, because really we're just adding and subtracting components here, so we can use the same properties, distributive property applies. And I know I'm going out of order. Um, U plus V plus W equals U plus V plus W, so that the parentheses in addition don't really make a difference. U plus the opposite of U equals zero. Right, if we go out a certain distance, we come right back the same direction, the same distance. We wind up right where we started, so the net vector is zero. Um, the scalar one times u gives us u, and then uh, we can distribute this way too. But eight and nine go pretty much hand in hand. All right, so that's all I've got for. Uh, um, we'll write down end of twelve point two a, and we'll work on uh, twelve point two b. Um, tomorrow. Alright, so thanks for watching. I will see you guys soon.